and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whosoever hearkeneth unto me, saith the Lord, shall dwell safely and shall be quiet and fear and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Hallelujah. We thank God for those verses of scriptures. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing, the doing of his word. Now we're here to introduce to some and present to others the angel of this house, a nation for Christ, deliverance tabernacle, the honorable bishop, designate Anthony Daniels. Let's say amen. God bless you, Bishop. God bless you, everyone. And I'm grateful today to be here in the house of the Lord one more time. Truly, God is good. Just jotting down something else the Lord showed me today. I'm grateful today for just being here in the land of the living. Thank God for another day that we have. The Lord has allowed us to see another great day today. Another day of life, another day of purpose, another day where we can come together and worship the name of the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Diane, for the great work you've done today in the Christian Education and Enrichment Session to Missionary Genesis Daniels doing our songs and doing all of our camera work and so forth. We're grateful for her. Thank God today for all things on today. This has been a very interesting time that we're in, Saints. And I don't want you to be fooled. We've been talking about it. And Jesus himself talks about how these are the beginning of sorrows. It is the beginning of a time that, a beginning of a time, a great time of pain, a time of great trouble, a time of great peril. And we must live in the midst of these things on today. It is a definitely praying time today, as we said in our Sunday school today. Um, we have had, we still are in the midst of the global pandemic or plague as we've been, called, as we've been saying. We've had the death of uh, some very prominent people, with Kobe Bryant down on, further on. And then we've had the uh, injustice that's taken place with, our, with George Floyd and various others that have taken places throughout the month. And uh, it has caused great distress in our, many of our urban centers, many there's been protests. They have been peaceful protests, but they've also been protests. I think there's also, that's kind of, have been infiltrated by rioting and protest, uh, rioting and also looting and violence has also been taking place. And so our prayer today is, is that we uphold justice. We are a nation for Christ. We uphold the justice for George Floyd and for the various others who have lost their lives at the hands of, of uh, cops and police who, were, who had did unjustly towards them. Uh, we condemn the acts that these policemen had did towards these, not only George Floyd, but the, the other individuals that lost their lives at the hands of police, and we know that not all police are bad. We know that there are many good police that we also know, but to those who are committing these acts and committing these violent acts, we are praying that the Lord will provide swift justice and that justice to the full extent will go forth. We also, here at the Nation of Christ, do not condone, we also support peaceful protesting and protesting that will be able to lend a voice be able to, uh, to be able to represent the cry, the invisible cry of those that are not, who feel they're not heard. But we do not also, but we don't condone when it comes to the destruction of property and the destruction of people's businesses and their livelihoods. And so we here are walking in balance and striving for balance today. This is the time now where calmer heads and wisdom as we spoke in the service must prevail today because we are living in a time now where wisdom, judgment, discernment, and decisiveness is now being pushed to the side for the spirit of irrationality 
and emotions. And don't get me wrong, I know emotions and very high today. We are in a very dangerous time. But we also must walk in a spirit of discernment and understanding to recognize the forces and the powers, whether demonic, whether earthly, satanic, that are behind these things and that are trying to push us into a new world order, an order that we have never seen, one that will ultimately usher in the Antichrist. And so we must be prepared today. And this is why we must also, this is why Jesus said in the scripture that a house divided against itself will not stand. And so we here at our church, we love the Lord, but we also know that we live in a very cruel and wicked world. And so today, as we are going to give you a message from the Lord, we pray. We're praying for our cities, with many of the cities is all across the country protesting is going on and all types of uh, things that have happened. There's been many peaceful protesting as well. But foreign elements have gotten into these protests where you have anarchists and nationalists and various other uh, racial groups that have infiltrated these groups and are stirring up looting and rioting. And so we are praying that those that are on the ground now will be able to, up to it, that they would receive this that they would be able to vet properly and be able to shun those that want to align with them and yet but have an ulterior motive that will not bring uh, attention to the various acts that have been committed against various ones, but will also but not bring the wrong attention to that movement. We don't want the movements to be blamed but we want the movements to achieve the, to achieve the goal, and that is to shed a light on the racial injustice that is taking place. And so we are grateful today, and this is praying time. This is not the time for the church to be divided. If there's one time we must stand united, it's now. Um, this is not the time if you're one to protest. If God has given you a grace to protest, we must pray for you. And if God has given you a grace to, to intercede for those that are protesting, and we say protesting, those that are protesting the right way, then we are praying for you. And if you're one that, 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 that whose, whose grace is not into any of those areas, but your grace may be, may be behind the scenes, or maybe you're into trying to push the legislatures, or maybe you're into uh, working with government or working with lawmakers, and so on, if that's what you do, then that's the grace that God has given you. But this is not the time to be divided. This is not, this, we went through this during the, during, during the pandemic that's still going on. And so there was blame across both aisles. If you went, you were crazy. And if you didn't go, you were a coward. This is the time now where we as the church must pray for spiritual buoyancy. That as we try, as we strive to navigate in these rough waters, if you notice a ship, a ship has what they call buoyancy. And without buoyancy, the ship will toss, will, will capsize. But they have designed the ships to be able to take in enough water so that it will bring a balance to the ship. And I believe that even in this, we in the, as the church must also strive for spiritual buoyancy so that we can have a spirit of discernment. Yes, the things that we are seeing, the things that we are seeing on social media, and I'm grateful for social media, because at one time we wouldn't have known many of, not that we did not know these things were going or not going on, but now we see the magnitude of what's taking place. And so it is important and it is vital that those of us, we must have a spirit of, of wisdom. We must have discernment in this season. We must have an ear to hear and eyes to see the things that the Lord is trying to reveal to us because we need strategy, divine strategies are needed so that we do not cross the, 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 we do not cross the wrong venue and stir up warfare. And so my prayer today, our prayer today is that the Lord will bring a spirit of reasoning, a spirit of calmness, but also a spirit of, 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 of justice that must take place. 
because we can no longer, no longer can they just be peace and calmness and justice is not being brought forward. And so we must today must strive for these things because we often, uh, we often hear no justice, no peace. There can be no peace, and when I say no peace, not that we're out here destroying property and tearing up people's businesses, but there can be no peace even in the Lord if we don't have justice among each other. Even the Lord himself, as we will read, had, had, had asked the question, had, was concerned because in the 59th chapter of Isaiah, he was concerned that there was no intercessor. He was concerned that justice, was, was that corruption had, had gotten into the king and gotten into the judges and gotten into the various forces and the various bureau, uh, bureaucracies that were put in place to help make sure, to ensure that people would get the just uh, verdicts that they were striving for, that they were looking for. But... In anything, if things, people, when people begin to stray from God, oppression begins to come in, injustice begins to creep in, all manner of wickedness begins to come in. Well, let me do this here. Let me go to the Word of God, and I'm just going to read a few verses from Isaiah, the 59th chapter, and we're going to see, and we're going to see where the Lord takes us. But in the 59th chapter, beginning from verse 1 of the book of Isaiah, it simply says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you that have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear, for your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, your tongues have muttered per per perverseness. None call it for justice, nor any pleaded for truth. They trust in vanity, they speak li and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. Their feet, run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity, wasting and destruction are in their paths. The way of peace they know not, and there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths, whosoever goeth uh, therein shall not know peace. I'm going to scroll down for the sake of time. Verse 13, in transgressing and lying against the Lord and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt and conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. And judgment is turned away backwards and justice standing afar off for truth is fallen in the streets and iniquity cannot and equity cannot enter. Yea, truth falleth, and he that departed from evil, making himself a prey, and the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment, final verse, and he saw that there was no man, and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness is sustained him. My thought today for you brothers and sisters who are watching this broadcast all over wherever you may be, I want to talk to you from the subject, the fall of justice and the rise of Christ. The fall of justice and the rise of Christ. One of the things that we must understand is is that our nation, and I've said this many times, no matter, no matter what side of the aisle you may be on, whether you're red, whether you're blue, whether you're black, whether you're white, whether you are rich, whether you're poor, whether you're young, whether you're old, whether you are, um, whether you 
uh, have, whether you're born with a silver spoon in your mouth or whether you're born in the poorhouse, wherever you may be in life, everybody knows that our nation is in trouble. If you notice the news reporters, the news media, they can tell you that there's something is wrong. You hear various industrialists, or you hear various moguls, or you hear the politicians, you hear the various ones, whether you were in the wealthy or the middle class or those that are in poverty. But everybody knows something is not right. Something is not what it used to be. Um, everybody can see that there's something that's not going well with the country. We are seeing the fall of justice. Not only, not only are we seeing it now, but this has been going on for so long. The oppressed, those that are the, the, the unfortunate, the, the, uh, the, the ones, the people who don't have a voice, people who don't have monies and don't have, have influence, they have been persecuted and pushed aside for so long that we have created a powder keg to it, so to speak, and if you're not careful, it's going to explode. People can only take for so much. We just have to say it for what it is. And if you're not careful, those of us that have been called by God or have been assigned by God who have, uh, have been uh, selected or chosen to serve in whatever capacity we may be in, whether it's in government, whether it's in the church, whether it's leaders, whether it's wherever God has graced you or placed you in, there is a responsibility that we must have, and that responsibility has been advocated. That responsibility has been abandoned, and we have now pushed it to someone else and let somebody else deal with it. Or we have gotten to a place where the scripture says we have taken our hands and put it in the scales and given an unjust measure. This is the time where oppression is running wild. We have, and, I'm, and I'm, don't get me wrong, I still believe that America is still probably the, is still the best thing, the best system that we have in this world right now. But when you compare it to other nations, when you compare it to more totalitarian nations, when you compare it to communism, when you compare it to socialism, I still believe the American system still, still is probably the best thing that we got right now. However, there are still some issues that we must deal with, issues that have been pushed to the side for so long. Whether it's uh, the social groups, whether it's a type of supremacy that's going wild, whether it's uh, benign and neglect, there have always been policies put in place to shun and to push people, and to push the issues that, the real issues that people have, and to use other people and other forces and other places and things to be ahead of them so that when, when the issue is brought up, once again, their issue is pushed to the side. And finally, we got to a place where disrespect comes in because whenever people have been oppressed for so long and when people have gotten to a point where they are just tired and frustrated, you know, disrespect starts to come in because we are, we feel, some feel because I'm a certain color or because I have a certain prestige or because I have a certain status, we feel that we are superior to each other. And so what's happening is, is that we are seeing this once this experiment called they call it the melting pot is now getting to be become a, a place where competition for resources among the different ethnicities is going on. I believe that in this time that America is in trouble because she has turned from God. She has turned from her first love. America is in trouble because God had done so many great things for this country. When this country was, even when the country was born, it wasn't even supposed to survive this long. When the British and the various other groups had even said they would die within a few, within a few months. But God was with the country and, and strived to stay with the country, hoping that one day she would be able to turn from her wicked ways. You have to realize that in this time that we are in, the, there are various injustices and racisms and various other isms that have taken place in this country. And it has caused the standoff that we are seeing right now. 
Even the racial race wise of the 1960s cannot compare to what we are seeing today. And dare may I say, if we're not careful, if we don't get a handle on this, if America does not deal with itself, when it deals with the the the, um, the sin that that has cursed America to a certain to have cursed America down and through the history, if, if America doesn't deal with this, it will ultimately lead to her destruction. Uh, America turned was once a, was once a place that they honored the Bible, they honored God. But it was a place that also has turned from God in every which way it could. They have embraced political, they have embraced uh, uh, political tolerance where everything is tolerated but God is scorned. Uh, everything is tolerated but God is kicked out of everything. But yet we turn back around when we in trouble, we want to cry out to the Lord, asking to God for help, but this was the same one that you curse. And so we are in this hour right now, saints, that if we don't turn to God, and this is not just aimed at the protesters. This is not just aimed at the police. This is not just aimed at the preacher. This is not just aimed at the government official. This is not just aimed at the political, at the bureaucratic head. This is not just aimed at if you work for the city. This is not just aimed for those that work for the private sector. This is not just aimed if they work for the public sector. At the end of the day is if we don't turn to God, we're going to lose this nation. If we don't turn back to God, we're going to lose this country. If we don't turn back to God as a, as a people, we are going to, this country is going to fall into civil war and civil unrest and chaos. And so we as God's people, we must now be as Jesus talked about. Jesus did not hide anything from the fact that this is what people must understand. He did not hide from us that there will be times like this. He did not hide from us that there will be perilous times. He did not hide from us there will be a time of lawlessness and unjustness going on. He did not hide from us there will be a time where man will, brother will hate his own brother and father would hate son and daughter would hate mother. He never said there would be a time when even the old, when old those that had the gray hairs would be disrespected and dishonored. It wouldn't be a time when men would rise up to try to devour and try to destroy each other. And this is why the church today, whether you're a black church, whether you're the white church, this is why we must, there has to be a time of reconciliation, healing, and justice. If we are to stand, if this country, if this nation is to stand, you know, we must understand that we are in a time where this nation could, go, could fall into utter chaos. Let, let somebody else get killed. Let somebody else be unjust, falsely murdered. Let another, let, if it happens, we are facing civil war. And so here, people of God, we must come together. If we are to survive, we must come together and put our racial, the racial differences must now be not just put to the side, but they must be reconciled. And so, people of God, we are in this time and in this hour. Uh, I saw the police, and when they killed uh, George Floyd, a tragic situation, but was not the only situation. It is a sign that justice has fallen, not only in the streets, but it's fallen on every aspect of, of, of society. It has come to a point where a man's life is no longer valued based on the color of his skin. It's a very dangerous time, very sad time. And so it's important for us as God's people that we realize that it is the time of the fall of justice, but it's also the rise of Christ. I'm grateful that even in these times when it looks like corruption is running rampant, whether it's in government, whether it's in our politics, political system, whether it's in economics, whether it's in our social orders, I'm glad that Jesus said, and Jesus in this scripture is saying, yet there is no intercessor. He, he looked around and probably was trying to find a righteous judge. 
He looked around and tried to find a righteous or a holy, someone that could uphold righteousness and could not find it. He probably looked around and said, is there a preacher that's out there that will cry loud and spare not? But he didn't find Isaiah, but he's speaking through the prophet. Is there one that's out there that's willing to cry loud and, and cry for those that are oppressed and cry for those that have no voice and cry out for those who have no say, have no influence, have no name, have no number. Is there one? That's why he's calling. There is no answer. But he said, I will be able to, I will get this salvation with my own hand. And I'm glad that the Lord ain't just caught up in no man. That if a man falls, then he don't have no plan. But, but God said, I'll do it by my own hand. I'll come down. And it is, this is this scripture is talking about the coming of Christ, the just one, the anointed one, the one who said that I will take the sickle and I will put it in the ground and reap the harvest. The one that says that he said that he, his name is called Emmanuel. God is with us. Uh, he said they call his name Jesus because he will save us from our sins. Uh, he talks about in Isaiah, he said that they will call him the wonderful counsel, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace, and the government will be upon his shoulder. And so people of God, I'm here to tell you that yes, there is a, the justice has fallen, but Jesus will rise up. And I believe, saints of God, if we learn as his people to learn how to come together and put down our racial bias, put down this person, I don't like this person, I don't like that person, and put down the fact that we, no matter what we are, uh, you may be wealthy and I may be poor, but at the end of the day, the Lord will still bless us all. We have to understand that God is not like man. He said, come and let us reason together. The fall of justice we're seeing right now. We're seeing the manifestations that are taking place right before our eyes. And what we have to realize is many people are saying that it's going to get better. Many are saying that things are going to change. But we have to remember that these are the days, the last days. And it's a time of peril, a time of crisis. And as God's people, we must also come to terms with what's going on. We have to remember even now with the COVID-19 virus, that's, that virus is not done away because of the protest. If anything, they're even looking for that through another way to come upon us. And then what is to take place after that? And so when we face these things, it is the fall of justice, but the rise of our Christ. And that's just what I'm glad today says that even when justice falls, even when it looks like equity is no longer there, even when it looks like corruption is running rampant, even when it looks like uh, you are being taken advantage of, but the Lord said, I will not leave you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will not lead you by yourself. I will not alone. He's letting you know, letting the church know even today that we must be able to navigate through, this, through these dark times that we are in. You've got to remember that these are the beginning of sorrow. This is the time of perilous time. Jesus never hid anything from us. And because he didn't hide anything from us, it gives us a for a, a forward of what we must do and how we must prepare and how we must get ourselves in place for the coming of the Lord because his coming is imminent more than whatever. The Lord says that when you see these signs, look up because your intention draweth not. You've got to realize that when you see the protests, when you see civil unrest, when you see white nationalism, when you see all matter of chaos going on, when you see the times of the anarchists, when you see racial unrest, when you see uh, all matter of crisis in the world, remember that the Lord said in his time it is, it is the fall of justice, but it's the time for the rise of Christ. And I want to say this to you, many of you that are listening and watching us, it's time that even though are outside, the outside of us, 
there is a hall of justice, but it's time for the believer to allow the Christ to arise in you, to allow the Christ to arise in you, that you might be the intercessor, that you might be able to gain the glory for God that he, that he, that he desires, that you might be the one that can intercede in the behalf of the of those that are under being mistreated, and those that have no voice, and the oppressed, and those that are being taken advantage of. He needs an intercessor, even in this time. And my question, will you be that intercessor? Will you be the one that will lift up your voice like a trumpet? Will you have the mind and the strength and the gumption to cry loud and spare not and to lift up your voice like a trumpet? Will you allow the Christ to rise up in you by turning away from wickedness and turning away from unrighteousness and turning away from the things that's of this world? Listen, I'm getting ready to close now. I'm here to tell you today that justice has fallen, but through Christ, he's going to lift it back up. It is only in Jesus that we have a hope. It is in the Lord that we have peace. It is in the Lord that gives us the favor when the enemy comes in like a flood. Let me tell you, sometimes when justice is falling, it's easy to fall in line with the status quo. If they doing it, I'm going to do it. If they looking down on this person, if they're ostracizing, if they're saying, we're not going to help them.
because our society is veering in a spirit of lawlessness. While we're fighting, other agendas are being enacted. Be careful of the media because they're giving you a piece here and they're giving you a spin on the truth here and they're giving you a narrative there and they have us distracted. They have us divided. They have us so divided that other demonic, other satanic, other forces are creeping in on a way. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, rulers of darkness, powers, satanic forces. But we think the fight is between us. We think joining a group makes us superior versus the other side. We think that if we, this spirit of superiority, because I am, I'm on this team, or I look like this, if we don't come to terms, the scripture says through one blood, he made the nations. No matter what color we are, no matter what we may be, and I don't get caught up in diversity, because to a certain extent that is also caused even especially the black people to have their movement agenda pushed to the side. It is time for us, this country, this nation, to begin to reconcile, to begin to face the fact, to not just try to dismiss it, whether it's slavery, whether it's Jim Crow, whether it's the discrimination, we cannot break that out of history. And I know many of our white brothers on our Caucasian brothers on the other side, many of them have also agreed as well. But there's also an element of those who feel a sense of superiority and feel like they have a right to kill us or destroy us or to take us out or to feel like our lives are nothing. Well, y'all kill each other, but by the same token, and this is no offense, but if I see Kuki and Ray Ray keep fighting and killing one another, they are not the police. They don't have badges and guns. I expect those that have the guns and badges to, to operate in a certain mindset. But see, what we must understand is no matter who you are, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're black, I don't care if you're white, I don't care if you're a police officer, I don't care if you're a government official, I don't care if you're a billionaire, I don't care if you're a boy. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, and if you don't have God's Word, we are liable to do anything. And I implore this country, just like I come, I, I preach against everything. I implore this nation to come back to God. I implore this nation, white and black, come back to the Lord. Open your eyes. There's a new world on the cover. Open your eyes before God for you allow, for the Lord allows you to be put in captivity. Open your eyes and wake up and realize that satanic forces are behind, are coming behind. You're being used by the enemy and you don't even know it. It's time to wake up. It's time to open our eyes. It's time for us to understand the times and the season that we are in. That black man is not your enemy. That black man can't, can't, can't do anything to you. He doesn't have any rights. He doesn't have the power. You must understand racism. Racism is not just they just calling me a name, but racism is a system. Racism is a system where certain people who don't have powers and authority to shut you out of certain arenas and shut you out of certain venues.
Savior and shut you out of certain, certain places. To my white brothers, the black man is not your enemy. Could it be that the very forces that you have put in power have turned against you? And so I'm here to tell you today, the black man is not your enemy. Don't kill the black man. Don't destroy the black man. Don't destroy us. And I say that as a black man. Oh, I have lighter pigment, but there's black. I'm a black man. I identify myself as a black man. And because I'm black, I don't, I don't feel shame. But I also don't want to have fear to walk a street or to walk down the supposedly wrong way. It's time for us now to repent of, of, of the issue of racism. It's time before we destroy ourselves, before we end up doing the devil's bidding. He planted the seed of hatred. And now the court now has got y'all ready to kill the black people. And black people now have to feel like they're on the defensive and gotta fight back. It must stop. As we get ready to pray, I'm praying for both sides. We pray for this nation. We pray for healing, divine healing. We pray for restitution and restoration in the name of Jesus. And if you're the one that has racism in your heart, I plead the blood against you. That, that spirit of racism, that spirit of hatred, stop getting caught up in the narrative. You don't know those people. Stop allowing your views to paint a narrative and learn get to know the people for yourself. This is why we are getting arrogant. Sometimes, and you have to understand this, the enemy works in narratives, perceptions. He creates illusions. And don't get me wrong, they got to be reality to it. But sometimes you got to look at the reality of what happened to them. Slavery is real. Jim, the effects of Jim Crow is real. They destroyed Black Wall Street. Yes. See, if we're going to deal with racism, then you got to take the band that over the laceration in order for the people in the womb to be properly healed. You can't write it away. You can't dismiss it. You can't say it's just imagined. You can't say they're just making it up. It's real. It was so real that they had a civil war about it over 100 years ago. Let us not repeat history. Let us not because this civil war that's coming, if we don't get a hold of this, this civil war that's coming will not just be white, will not be over the issue of just the black people. If you had North and South fighting each other about do we have the right to enslave? Do they have the right to not enslave? This one that's coming, if you're not careful, will be white versus black, old versus young. It will be millennial versus baby boom. It will be lawlessness versus, versus order. It will be right versus left. It will cross every, it will touch every life. And that's why it's important for us to know those of us that know Christ, that claim to know him. We must be those that can diffuse, those of us that can uplift. Those of us that have an answer to why we are in what we are in and make a choice, make a decision. I don't want to see no more black men getting killed. I don't want to see no more destruction of, of these cities, no matter what color they are. But we need peace now. We need peace. We need restoration. We need restitution. And we need justice. Let us strive for this people of God. Let us strive to love one another. Especially in, in the church. We often say there is no black church, there is no white church. But Sunday, the most segregated day of the week. Let us stop the end, let us stop fighting even across, even among each other. Deal with the reality. It happened. Deal 
don't destroy the business. But let's give the wisdom of God to use our money and use our finances and use our divine power that we might be able to bring those to the table that's trying to hurt us and destroy us. In the name of Jesus, we say yes, Lord, to your will. Yes, to your way. In Jesus' name we pray.